Hey everyone, welcome back. This is my review of... <laughs> Keep forgetting to get the fucking... Chapter... Bleach manga chapter 532. Alright, let's go. I'm really tired right now, right? But I just want to get this review recorder out of the way. So let's just get this done with so I can get, so I can get to bed. <laughs> Alright. Um, basically, this chapter is very simple. All right, very simple. It starts out with Aizen, Gein, and Tosin wearing the same cloaks that, oddly enough, Kisuke wore in. Not right, really oddly, just interestingly enough, that Kisuke wore in the uh, Turn Back the Pendulum arc. Obser basically observing the fight between uh, Ishin and this hollow that, that they sent, which Tosin named Whitey. Which, there's something I want to mention right there real quick. But a lot of your people are saying, especially white guys are saying that that's racist. Now, I'm probably one of the palest white mi white guy, probably one of the palest white boys you'll ever see, and I really don't give a fuck, okay? Um, <laughs> put it plainly, I really don't give a fuck. He, he has a name now, so we know what to identify, so we know what to identify him by if we have or have to in the future. That's really all I see that as. Alright, I mean, I really don't see how that's racist at all. So, yeah, I mean, he's a white hollow. There you go. Uh, I mean, the I mean the fact that they didn't give him a complex wealth out name makes me, leads me to believe that he's probably not going to play too huge of a part later on. Although people are suspecting that he might be Tensa's on Getsu. Mm, I guess I could kind of see that in a way, but I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there was that one point when Ichigo was training for the final Getsu Got Tensho where Hollow Ichigo and Tenza Zangetsu actually fused together for the training, so you never know. But, yeah, anyway. Anyways, though. And it does, and it does oddly look like similar, anyways, to, to Ichigo's Resurrection. Completed Resurrection. The only difference is they think it's a little less muscular and also the horns are a lot shorter, I think. So, yeah. Also, I think the hair is shorter, too. But anyways, though. The Whitey and Ishin continue to battle. Whitey, it seems like Whitey's winning. Alright? And Ishi, Ishin claims that he could release his Bankai and win this quickly. Except if he releases his Bankai, he'd quickly be crushed by the, uh, by his own Riatsu. When I heard that, I was like... Holy shit, how strong is he? If his Bankai... If... If releasing his Bankai could crush him by the weight... By the pressure of his own Ryatsu. That is fucking intense right there. Hold on a sec. Alright. And then we cut, basically cut to Masaki and um, Ryuken, and Masaki can sense the battle that's currently going on. She wants to go out and help them. Ryuken claims that no, she must stay here since she's the last member of the Kurosaki family. She has to, she ha he has to make sure she doesn't get hurt, and she claims that if she, she allows anyone to die... Who doesn't deserve to die? Then she, if she, like, if she allows this, even though she could help out, she wouldn't be able to forgive herself, and she heads out anyways. And so, supposedly, this actually gets Ryuken kind of interested because he tells the maid there, forget her name, to a uh, suit up or something like that. So it seems like he's gonna help head out to the battlefield too, which would be interesting. All right, and then once Masaki gets there, she distracts Whitey. Whitey attacks her and. It looks, it looks like that Whitey has won, but then she, she says, gotcha, and strikes Whitey. And that basically ends the chapter. I think that's one of the best, um, like, most accurate summaries I've ever done for one of these reviews. Wow. <laughs> but anyway, so, how is the chapter as a whole? Masaki Kurosaki is fucking badass. She... Alright, in terms of personality-wise, she's much similar to Orihime, but I think she... I do like her in similar ways, though, that I like Orihime, but I think that 
She's way more badass than Orihime. I don't think I've ever seen Orihime act this badass before. So, yeah, that's definitely something right there. Right, get, getting, okay, let me make this clear right. Her getting hit was not the badass part, all right? The badass part was what she did afterwards, revealing that she just faked it so that she could get a shot out on Whitey. Kind of similar to how really early on in Naruto, how Naruto did a similar thing with Kabuto in order to strike Kabuto with a Rasengan, in a way. Although, Naruto, Naruto is not badass, okay? Period. But that's beside the point. <laughs> Anyway, though, and that's basically all that this chapter amounts to. We seem to be getting pretty, pretty close to uh, when, at the beginning of this flashback, when Ishin was lay laying on the ground. All right, I suspect it was probably from this battle, and I'm beginning to wonder if Ishin actually is going to um, re re release the final Getsu Gatensho during this battle, or if that was just, or at all, really, or if that was just a if that theory was false, because I, it'd be kind of interesting if he did, because that would explain perfectly right there how he lost his powers. Alright, because obviously if you use Final Gets a Good Ten Show, you lose your powers. That's why Ichigo lost his powers during his fight with Aizen. But, yeah, and man, motherfucking Aizen, he is fucked with everyone in this series. Oh my god. Now we'll go and find out he's even fucked deeply with Ishin. Dear God. See, I mean, go. I mean, think that he could very well be uh, one of the conduits that caused Ishin to lose his powers. You know, maybe if Ishin did release the final Getsu Gat Hensho, maybe Aizen did something to where Ishin kind of had no choice, or maybe Aizen did something else to where Ishin lost his powers. God damn, man. <sighs> Or maybe, or or maybe it was that uh, Aizen did something where Ishin got banished from the Soul Society, and thus got stripped from his powers. And then maybe later on he somehow got those powers back, even though Soul Society stripped them. I don't know, but this is getting really good, though. <clears throat> this chapter itself, overall, was it was an okay chapter. The ending was really good. I thought Masaki is badass. All right, and yeah, it's kind of interesting because I we originally thought that the first time Masaki really had a confrontation with a hollow was when the ho hollow was when uh, Grand Fisher killed her when she was protecting Ichigo. So I I don't know. Maybe this is the f for uh I don't know because from what we understand, in order for a uh, Someone to become a full bringer their parents have to be attacked from hollows by hollows when they're pregnant So I don't know maybe Her and Ishin end up going at it shortly after this and she gets pregnant immediately and you know She's Ichigo still able to have full bring. I don't know how that works exactly. I don't know how that's gonna work exactly but That's just kind of interesting too. So yeah, but that basically concludes this review though. So, yeah, overall, pretty good chapter. The ending was pretty epic it's, uh, in and of itself. All right, so, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this review, though. See you after, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.